Am I going to get to work, boss? Yeah. I'm actually recording right now. Good. Making movies and stuff in here. Can you believe we're making a docu-series in the middle of making our main movie? This is nuts. I mean, the 40-day thrash is what a lot of people is going to think is crazy. But that's kind of the norm for me, you know. It, like last year, we did the 28-day thrash for the Bug Zapper for Sega. And I mean the Fiat fixing it as many times as I break it. And just the banana hammock and everything. Like everything I do is kind of thrash mode. I have to do everything that way. I only set aside a certain amount of time that I can spend on my personal stuff in between all the hustle money I got from sewing, you know. So I guess I should explain how I found myself in a 40 day, 40 night thrash, thousand miles from home, huh? So how the hauler idea even came to life was from a really bad day. Um, I was going to go get the top in Virginia for the relish rocket and then my 2017 Chevy truck, like what I thought was the most responsible thing I ever bought, the transmission dropped in it, right out of warranty too. And that was a, I mean, that's one of those things that happens that it's, I mean, this ship just sunk, man, that's it. Like, couldn't do it. And when Trent came and got me, the whole idea of another race car went away. It was like, I don't need another race car, dude. I need a truck. And now all I have to build a truck out of is that Izetta that we got from Jerry Bellot, you know? And I'm the only person crazy enough to see a truck out of an Izetta, you know? So, as I sit here, we are on day 33 of the Big Deal movie. Now, probably over 10 years ago, I knew about Jerry's Corvette. When I got to his property, I saw all these tiny cars and I said, I have to show Mikey all these cars. He has to meet Jerry someday. When I found this body of this Izetta, talk about perfect timing. So when I made the connection and I told Jerry, go, hey, kind of joking a little bit. I said, hey, that rusted out Izetta that's behind your shop. If you ever want to get rid of it, I know the perfect person for it to go to. To be honest, I'm almost holding back tears because this is Mike, it's Mikey's birthday this weekend. Not even kidding. We want to put the, like you in the movie because we think that you're such a, a big part of Americana, right? And there will never ever be another Jerry Bella. See, to me, the responsibility for us would be to come down, hang out with you, film you, you know, film up picking the car. But all right, we're gonna FaceTime Mikey. Let him know what Jerry just said. What's up, What's up beautiful? Hi. Guess what? Are you recording? Would you stay still? Jerry's gonna give you the Izetta. I just talked to him. I think he's awesome. So he said, I was like, but how much money, you want money for it now? He's like, just bring me a bunch of those magazines and we'll be good. So I get to meet all kinds of awesome people through Trent's adventures. You know, he leaves and goes and shoots for the, for the magazine and the books. And um, on this trip, when he came back, he found a Jerry Bellot. And when I seen him playing the accordion, and some of the cars he was into, especially a guy that would take a Corvette and put that nose on it, I knew that he had to be my kind of guy. And more than even seeing this Izetta that Trent sent me a picture of while he was there, more than that, I wanted to meet this guy. Like, I felt like I could just feel the spirit of this guy. I, I'm, I'm a scrapper, you know? I build stuff with nothing. Like, that's, I pride myself on it. And I can see that in stuff. Like, when I see someone make stuff, I see a maker. You know, I see a guy. And I just wanted to touch his hand. I wanted to meet him, you know? And I was so glad to get the opportunity to. I mean, as much as I loved his work, it was cool just to get enough respect from the guy for him to trust me to see what I can make out of it. I didn't show him any drawings. I didn't even have a plan of what to do. I just told him, I'll make something cool, man. And he said, I know you will. You know, I can't wait to see it. And having that kind of trust and faith in something's what makes you want to tackle something this big, you know, especially a guy like Jerry that's cut from the same cloth like I am, you know. After looking at the footage, I just realized Jerry talk tells a story about this car having a setup of a motorcycle powered Izetta. That's yeah. a crazy coincidence. To get some documentation, where did you get the Izetta? How did Izetta. The Izetta was a running car, a drivable car. I knew the guy that owned it. And these boys talked him out of it, and they put that darn motorcycle engine in there in the frame. They made it fit good, but it's in the middle of the car. What you gonna do with a motorcycle on the side of your hotter than shit? 
Yeah. Closing. Anybody put a motorcycle engine in eyes, that has got something wrong with them. Well, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Said, uh, he said, oh, hey, this old boy is crazy. He had a motorcycle motor in this thing. And I said, yeah, mine's got a Harley motor in it back home. <laughs> And he's There's like two people that probably had the idea to do that to an Izetta, <laughs> and the second guy is picking up this car now. Well, hey, his spirit lives on here, man. And while we're loading this body up in this broke down truck, I'll let good old Jerry play his home on the important. Stuff that when we get to justice. I'm gonna get behind me, you got too much real estate. <laughs> awesome, let me take a pet deal. Right, what was the deal I'm recording now? Where you live? I, I'm in Indiana. I'm 16 hours from home. And I'm gonna drive back down here to race this car when I get it done. We'll check on the drag strip. It's yep. Houston. I'll be there. You'll go with me, you promise. Oh, I'm going with you. I'm You're holding going. you to it. And you ain't buying shit either. Okay. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> and next time we'll see you, the thing will be racing, okay? Okay. All right. It's not often you can I'll talk do you proud with this, I promise you. It's not often you can talk somebody to understand what you say. Next time I come, I'll be here a couple days. We'll hang out, all right? Oh, man. We'll enjoy ourselves, I tell you. Thank you so much, man. Well, I know who I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, that guy. You know, it's my dream car. Like everyone knows, the IZ is my car. But. To get it from a guy like that um, makes me want to do it even better, you know? I want to bring this back and show him that not only do I love the car, but I love him too. And I want it to be, you know, something that lives on with his name on it as well as mine forever. I think this is the car to do it with, man. I've got nothing but good feelings. But why do you think that you chose Texas to do the 40 days and the 40 nights? Well, I had a creative workspace there with a couple friends that are art-driven people. And it was also wintertime here. You know, I knew if I was going to pull off this combo, I only had two gaps of time in between then and the very last show in Phoenix, Arizona for the Hot Wheels show on September 23rd. Um, the I know for a fact the hardest thing about this commitment on this whole project is I'm gonna have to be away from Ruth and the kids for 40 days, dude. Like, I, I'm gonna see them at Easter. See you guys. And do I wanna do that? Is it really worth that? Well, if we don't, paper to pavement's light shut off. So, dude, Joe Rogan said be undeniable. I think we ought to shoot for being undeniable, and I thought this was undeniably the coolest thing I could come up with. Yeah, super. We're gonna have to do some cutting. Did you bring a saw? Yeah, I got saw on the truck. Uh, well, so what's happened here is Puddin at Puddin's Fab Shop on YouTube has gave us 750 bucks for steel for the chassis and everything to build this. I just bought everything I've ever used to build chassis. So I don't really know what I'm doing, but I guarantee I have enough steel to do something now. So thanks Puddin. So, I mean, it all sinks in and the commitment's there when Darren's there to pick me up and take me and all that steel that Puddin from Puddin's Fab Shop sent to build a chassis with. Um, he sent me 750 bucks uh, for all that steel. And when Darren picked me up, dude, I'm saying goodbye to the kids. And I'm sitting here saying, I'll be back with something to drive, guys. And I don't really know what that is. So, um... Excitement, yes. Agony, more so. Everything that we build has to do purposes, and this purpose is to make a living with. So this is the first time since I left for college that I've made a life commitment and gambled like my house. And that time was Ruthie and me in the house getting gambled, going to Wyotech for upholstery, and now I'm doing it all again, letting it ride on this movie, but now I'm gambling with my family and our life instead of a home. So I know that what's coming next is like a lot, 
but it's a door to walk through for a better life for my family and I really appreciate you picking me up. I know it's just a one-way ticket ride, but I can handle my way back, buddy. So thank you so much. No problem, man. <laughs> hey, Mike is getting ready to go to Texas, start this movie. What do you think? Of all the crazy ideas, what do you think? Guys, I'm so excited for this. I'm excited to see what he's going to come up with because he, it's going to be crazy. It is going to be cool, but I am going to miss him so much. It's going to be hard, but I'm excited to see what he comes home with. Okay, here's the lights over here, right here. Hey, right there's ladies' food. You got feeder, and hey, hey, if anybody comes to do business, I'll be back in April. Okay? <laughs> it's a whole What's well, April? <laughs> Already in trouble. <laughs> Love you, baby. Hey, keep them under control. Bye, Darren. Bye. I'll take care of them on the way down. Bye, y'all. Oh man, that's the hardest part of this whole thing is going to be leaving them, but I can't wait to see their face when I roll back in, brother. Be a good thing. When I started to edit all this footage together, you told me about a show called The Loan, where people basically get dropped off, you know, like a Survivor Series type of scenario, but it's very intimate. It's very one-on-one, -on -one. and when, as soon as I started to watch that show that you recommended, and I started to watch your GoPro footage of being away from all of us, away from family, over a thousand something miles away, I truly felt like I was watching your version of Alone. And it's like a car adventure, but it's at the same time, it's Alone. Well, and I think that the show alone probably inspired a lot of the way I was holding the camera the whole time too, because that was my frame of reference. You know, it's probably my favorite show, but I just thought, well, what would be creative? What did I like seeing on that show? And what are gonna be some fun shots to catch while I'm here by myself? I don't want it to just be still shots. I, I want you guys to enjoy seeing this thing come together as much as I'm gonna enjoy building. This part of the docu-series is when I'm gonna drop in the mind shaft of thought and commitment in a project by myself. You're about to see one man in one garage attempt one massive project. I'm making all my adapter patterns to put all these pieces together. I always loved director sets when I was a kid and that's kind of what I do when I do this. I think of like, oh, I wanted this train to have a crane, so what brackets do I have to attach them both together? That's all this is. So I am still a child playing with life-size toys. Oh, and if you wanna know why Texas, guys, it's March back home, it's freezing cold. And look at this. Texas in March, ah, oh, the sun. <laughs> and I can build a whole project before the sun comes out in deputy. And then that is making all of this possible. Nothing but hand tools and kidneys. That's what my grandpa always said. And say how you figure that out. He go, kidneys, buddy, kidneys. Love you guys, get back to work. Oh, that's the end of day one. It's February 28th, 2023. Today was the first day I started building the pickle jar. 10 hours, 10 or 11 hours today. So just a little day, but I got both our rails done. So they'll go in like this and then we'll be able to attach to these. I'm really happy, really, really happy. And I think that everybody back home is gonna be proud of what I'm gonna do because if I have more days like today, the month's gonna be a really good month. Day two, and the only place the sun is shining is in my head, because it is raining here in Texas. I may have to wait for the rain to die down a little bit and just keep making patterns for something else. Don't waste time. So I'm gonna go grab some paper and do the paper side of paper to pavement until the rain stops. Have a good day, everybody. I'm gonna make as much progress as I can today.
right here is good. All right, and that's day two in the books. Uh, day two was full of paper stuff. I did, I had to chase down part numbers for tires. I had to make patterns for the body, which me and Mike, Mike just got home and he helped me carry it in. And it's ready to start patching on tomorrow. I'm gonna do from the belt line up on this one because of all the patch panels I have to cut off for the other Izetta. I, need, I mean, I know that it, it's beat up, you know, and pretty rough, but for what I'm actually using of it, it's pretty nice because, you know, I just need like this part to be good because I'm using bug everything else. So I just need, you know, I just need the top portion of this body to be good. And it's pretty good. I think a day or two tinkering with it here and I'll really, really have it looking good. So. All right, I'm gonna get some sleep so I can hit it hard tomorrow. Night, everybody. Okay, starting day three, and the body is in the garage. So I'm all loaded up, ready to go out there and make something happen. Let's try to build this thing today. And let's build it out of what I got sitting in here. Follow me. Here is the laboratory. Now, to turn that little thing and all of that stuff into that. Let's see, are we gonna, I see it, I see it in there. I'm gonna get started, bye guys. I'm gonna do the morning chores. So, I wanted to show you, this is day three. Day three, so Trent, this is how it's starting. Come here, Peppa. Some slop for the pig, grass for the goat. Roberta, come here. Here you go, girl. Here you go, girl. There you go. There you go, honey. Is that good stuff? All right, now go in here and get set up for the horses. Let's go get to work. Start on the roof. These windows, that back window, and that filling in that rooftop. That's a big job. Let's get that crossed off the list. Okay, so Darren's here. We're gonna get this frame unloaded. I got windows mocked up in place. Got all that. Got the rail all established. Got quite a bit done today, really. with me and trying to make movies but the electric has to go off every time so there is a big storm outside it's taking the electric out again but look at what i've got done i got this side window in and welded in and this one so now i'm just ready to sheet metal it all up and do body work so i really killed it today I hope the electric comes back on because I really wanted to get the back window in too. But if I don't, I am way, way farther ahead than I thought I could get in one day. All right, day four. I need to go get some supplies. Oh, well, first problem of the day. I was trying to get it out and shattered and fell out. So the glue wasn't as good as I thought it was. I got a mess to clean up. So 
I'm gonna clean this up, go inside, sit down, and restart the day. So, have a good day again, everybody. Okay, here's what I got. I thought it matched the shape of the car. I liked this like teardrop shape of the car and this reminded me of it. See how it kind of fits in it? So I thought actually this shape makes more sense. And I want it utilitarian like a truck. So I was thinking what kind of oddball little back window. And when I seen this one back there, I thought that is my window for sure. Because to me, it matches that shape right there. Bigger, this is like the aerial view of it, is that window. My brain plays tricks on me, but that is a narrowed Chevy truck, I think he said, probably like a 36 or something, just guessing, um, that I have cut down and flipped upside down into this shape. And as soon as I seen it, I seen this shape and was like, this is perfect, man. All mine. Thanks, Mike. Made the perfect window, buddy. Oh my gosh, these showed up. I can't wait to show you what this is. So the engine cover has got this vent. The fins are all messed up. And the engine, you're gonna be able to see through this, but I'm making like bedsides now, so you're not gonna be able to see the engine. And I was just thinking like at Hot Wheels, it would be so cool if like a little kid could come up and look, you know, like look inside. So, so I got these domes I'm gonna cut that out and I think yeah I think what I'm gonna do is maybe even mount it inward nah I don't know looks pretty cool outward either way that's what I'm gonna do I think it'll be cool I love that I love the shape of that and I like this too like when you're behind it you see this ledge from the back side, and then it'll have a scoop. Oh, I just love it. Absolutely love it. Because I'm on that scoop, go to that ledge, I think. Look right here. I don't know. Looks pretty good like that. I'm gonna weld it all on and see what we think. Day five, I got all these sheet metal pieces made. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up here, go put wheels on that chassis and get it up here because I'll probably start on that front clip today. If I get that front clip done today, I can put this bad boy on after I get that sheet metal done. Big day, here we go. I got the front clip cut off yesterday. Here it is. I got everything squared up. And I got the front end about ready to go on. So.
I'll just walk to Indiana. Okay, it's day seven. Last night I got the body brought in. I got the wind back window tacked in place and the little side panel area to start building from. I got it all tacked in and then I'm gonna start on those fenders. Once the fender's in place, then it's just kind of like the back of the cab, which I think I'm gonna do that once it's on the chassis so I know where it lands with the engine. One week down with what I've got done, unreal. I thought that this was two weeks worth of work, so. I'm firing on all cylinders. I feel like a million dollars, and the more I keep making the things I wanna make, the better I feel, so I'm gonna get to work. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're loving this this far because I've fallen in love with the little thing. So, pickle jar, here I come. Don't work. You just might. Brother, look at that. Looks like my drawing, man. Hey. Paper to pavement, son. Right this is cool as shit. Dude. Yeah, you know Mikey, the one with that weird truck. Oh my gosh, dude. This is the coolest thing ever. Oh my gosh. Wait till it gets a bed on it and everything. Oh, yeah. Certain, as they call it, uh, feng shui. Dude, it's the, it's it's got the look, man. I actually started working on this a week ago today, exactly. So I started on this thing on Tuesday morning, and it's Tuesday morning again. This is how much everything's changed in one week. I have got a roller. I've got a really dial in the body mounts today while everybody's at work and then darren is going to come and get the engine out of the container for me today which will be awesome so we'll get to work here's darren's first reaction of it it's bitching do you like it i do i like it dude yeah i do too i dig it in here i think it's gonna look perfectly normal in there <laughs> with everything you got going on right now this will not be the weirdest thing did you just say normal yeah this, okay this will be the most normal thing in that truck yeah hey american power ah just like my boy darren here real american power getting ready to put the motor in today that's gonna be the goal cool thing about today is Trent hasn't seen any of this yet just pictures and stuff so today's the first day that he's actually physically gonna see it in person and it's like just been a week since I seen him so I get to show him the progress today and he's gonna stop in for a few days he's gonna film all of the progress that comes together to see kind of what it's gonna be and then he'll be back when we finish it up so just need to keep this pace going and I'll see Indiana before I'm expecting. I'm gonna get back to work, everybody. Hey, whatever you're doing out there, do it the best you can. Love you. I hope this comes off in a, in a scenario where when you see me and Mikey together, you know we're kind of filming together. I kind of feel like that's when all the crew flies in and checks on them, right? Well, before this even happened, I had to go to Pennsylvania, New York, and back to Indiana before I even got to Texas. So 
I, I kind of feel like this is an opportunity before even showing Big Deal the movie. This docu-series helps us cover a little bit what goes into all the craziness behind our lifestyle and what goes on in the shop and what goes on at Paper the Pavement. When I was getting to Texas, the first several days of Mikey being to himself and unleashing all his building skills led him to almost knocking out. I felt like he was gonna finish the whole car before I got to Texas. What's up, man? What's up? Good to see you, dude. You ready to film a movie? Hey, I have put together Dr. Zeus's tow truck in the last week, man. Give me a hug. <laughs> we'll give me good acting. Oh. Oh, we'll give me a hug. You ready to film a movie, brother? Yes, buddy. All right, let me reverse. I'm a ranch hand too now. Oh yeah. I feed horses and everything. Luxury. Volkswagen made a single cab and a double cab. Paper to pavement makes cab and a half. Like that, ready to get the day started. What happened? Maybe a little. Ah! Did it, dude? How cool is this, dude? Look, roller, man. <laughs> it's a freaking roller with a motor and trans. This is cool, dude. Hey. My idea works, man. It's real. Paper? Boom! Pavement, baby. We did it. <laughs> and see the weights distributed over all four wheels since it's mid-engine. Trying to make this as comfortable of a vehicle that I can use. This one should, I mean, it'll last me forever. This is perfect. So all of these parts that I'm cutting off of this, I'm cutting them really high. Uh, I'm, I'm more concerned with keeping these pieces nice because all this car is, to me, is a parts car for big deal. So I need all these pieces to stay nice. This is what we got left over for Big Deal. So those three pieces are why I have that car. Mr. Bellop, let me show you something you ain't never seen before.
and then notch down and I'll cut this whole bottom off and then I'll just slide that up to probably somewhere in this area. So it'll still have this finished edge. And then I'll just splice it back in here so the wheel gap's all the same. And I don't have to metal form anything. Like I'm not, I don't need any metal shaping tools to build this stuff. I'm just using shapes that already exist out of my scrap pile. Dude, it just, it's perfect. A 28, 29 Model A front fender. Perfect back fender. Got plenty of room to work. And love it. I believe today I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the inside the car. And then I'm gonna put a lid here that lifts up and that's my engine cover. I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. We will see what it turns into. Okay, so it's day 12. Getting the day started. It's gonna consist of the back cab wall today. So I did this, so I would have all of this area under there to work on the side of the road. It'll be accessible through the inside and I'll be able to crawl under and sit on the ground like right there and do all the work I need to this thing. So trying to make it user friendly. And I thought with building this extension, there's not going to be any rain getting onto that engine through the bed. It's got a shell. Center caps for it, for the wheels. And then I wanted to do this. So I'd be able to crawl under here and work on it on the side of the road and stay dry. And then it's day 13. Today I'm gonna get started on those front sheet metal and the bumper. officially landed two weeks ago today so oh I have a lot done in two weeks I got pretty well all the structure figured out now starting today I'm gonna get going on the steering go ahead and get the firewall position and all that figured out today should be good I'm gonna get to it okay, it's day 15 my buddy Neil is grabbing me some uh, sheet metal today so I'll probably have that tonight. Oh, tires came in yesterday too. The back ones, some big boys. The biggest, the tallest ones they had. So a lot better, more so hauler-like. Trying to go for that Hot Wheels look, so need dramatic. I think that's pretty dramatic. All right, everybody. I am going to go get the day started. Say hi, Ruthie. Hi. Going over the game plans for the work truck with 
with the gang here. Neil, you're the man. Look up N Reimer on Instagram. I know him as Real Deal Neil. Neil Reimer, he is the man. And look at that, free hack. I didn't need to go buy a roller, didn't need to do anything. My gas bottle refill did it for me and Neil knew to go there. My kind of guy. Thanks for having my back, brother. Get in the truck, guys. What do you think of that? That's wild. <laughs> hey, Brandon. I'm all cut up, but it's all worth it. No pain, no gain. Through this whole season, it's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs. I know it seemed like more downs than ups, but in the valleys of life, I find the best people. So no regrets at all. You all, get out there and build something. It's a dark world. Let's go out there and light it up.